Hello, hello. My name is Kim Addis. I am the president and founder of Frame of Mind Coaching. And you have just joined the Frame of Mind Coaching Podcast, where we invite leaders from all over the world to come onto the podcast and get coached live and in, in person. Today, like I'm so excited about this. I have Daniel Marcos from the Growth Institute on the podcast. And I don't know if you've heard of Daniel, but he's everywhere. And I've been following him forever. And so I'm so thrilled that I'm going to get to coach him today. Daniel, welcome. Thank you, Kim. And this is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm used to coach people, not being You're on the used to side. being the coach. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. It's going to be so, a lot of fun. So tell us a little bit for those uh, listeners who have never heard of the Growth Institute. Who are you? What do you do? What is it all about? And uh, who are you helping? So we started scaling companies uh, pretty young. I was like 24 when we, let's say, scale our first company significantly. 1,200 employees, operation in nine countries. And we realized how much drama and stress scaling companies create, not just for the founders, but everyone, the team, uh, and all the haphazard of the operation. So we start reading a lot and really understanding that every problem or opportunity we have in business, someone already had gone through the process and they wrote a methodology or a format or a framework to go through it. So what we started doing is reading a lot of books and methodologies, taking courses, and be able to implement in our business and do much better. Yeah. So what we do at the Growth Institute is we bring all these resources in a, in a cost and, and format that makes sense for mid-market companies. Uh, as an example, implementing scaling up. If you hire a coach and everything, it's an amazing process, but you're talking about 80, $100,000. You go through the same process online for $3,000. Yeah. And that's exactly what we do. We, we just uh, bring something that is very difficult usually to do on a, uh, on a, on a class, uh, something that needs a lot of coaching and right. help implement in a present format that makes sense. Okay. And again, uh, the, the ideal client is an entrepreneur who's running a company for how many years at what level of revenue? So our... Let, let's say most of our clients do between a million and 20 million in revenue. Okay. And they, they want to scale, not necessarily scale revenue. We get a lot of people saying, I want to scale revenue. But a lot of people say, hey, I'm doing enough revenue. I want to make more profit. I yeah. want to work half of the time or whatever. Yeah. So they want to improve something significant in their business. Yeah. And that's how we help them go through that process. Okay, great. And I'm so happy to be talking to you today because a lot of people come to me for scaling coaching. And I say, that's not what I do. And what I do is I help leaders become really much, much better leaders and um, be able to influence their teams more effectively, but also achieve their goals inside and outside of the company with greater speed and ease, really. And so I'm excited that, you know, we're coming at it from slightly different angles, but happy to talk to you today. So what's going on? But what is we go? Let me go back a little bit. I've always yeah. said, if you want to 10x your company, you first have to 10x your team in quality and quantity. But but it's really about mindset. Like I, I have a firm belief that you could not build a great company. You could just build a great team. And that team is going to build a great company for you. And I have something else that I say is that if you want to 10x your company, you have to look at your own thinking. Because if you're not at a 10x place, your mind isn't there. So I start with the leader, then the team. We're very aligned. Great. Okay. So um, what is your that is going to be published in January? Oh, okay. Uh, that's exactly the three steps. Focus Amazing. On your, focus on your team and then focus on your company. Great. So what is your greatest challenge right now? What's happening? So the world is changing really, really fast. Uh, I mean, in online education, uh, we've been nine years in business and we started way in front of the trend we were doing I, I remember this uh, discussion so we partner with people that write books famous people um, like the other day I was talking with Salim Ishmael the first executive director of Singularity and okay. I met Salim at Singularity and he was telling he was writing a book and I said hey I'll, I want to buy your rights online he said what do you mean and I was like you're going to sell your rights of the book to a publisher in paper I want to buy your rights of your online course and he was like what are you talking about and he was head of Singularity. And he, that was still not very common. Right. So we started doing that. And then COVID came and everything went online. Like education just got transformed dramatically. Yeah. 
Uh, so now our industry is in, in a speed of change that is really, really dramatic. And we had to learn how to adapt and evolve much, much faster than before. So my biggest challenge today is helping my team be able to change and adapt as fast or even faster than the industry so we could dominate the industry. I always said that if you want to dominate your industry, you have to grow at two times the industry average. My industry is growing supposedly this year at 26%. So we have to grow at least at 50% if you want to lead the industry. And having that change creates a lot of drama and a lot of stress. So tell me about the drama, the stress, the where you are seeing people having a hard time changing and what you're looking for them to do and what they're falling short on. So as an example, um, on the selling process. Yeah. Um, when all of this online education started for the last 10 years, the, the most effective way was to do webinars, right? You get all this traffic, you get people to a webinar, people come to a webinar, and then from the webinar, you used to pitch them and sell them something. At COVID, our webinars, we had our highest attendance, our highest conversion, like everything. Now people are like up to here on Zooms and webinars and the rest. Yeah. So we have to significantly change our selling process. And, and then you have to try three or four ways and then we need to find one and then adapt and change all our marketing and sales process to a new sales process. Yeah. That's, as an example, that's a big challenge. And it was working. We're getting all these clients and revenue and it was easy. And we just got comfortable in the process of selling. Today, we know that process is not working anymore. So we have to significantly evolve that process. So how do you approach it right now? When you say we have to change this process, first of all, how many salespeople are on your team? Just as let's So start. today we're on 30 people okay. and my sales and marketing team are 10 or 12. Um, okay. Um, so it's a, a significant chunk of the company, probably 40%. Okay. And I imagine that you already approached them and say, we need a different approach. 100%. We need, okay. And then what happens? The problem is that in the past, if we did an effort of one, and got a result on one, they got used to getting a result equal to their effort. Today, it's very different. They're giving five of effort and getting yeah. one of result. Yeah. And it's it's pretty challenging and and, and um, uh, it's disencouraging that they said, hey, I tried this and I was expecting five and I got one. And, and, and it's very disencouraging for them. So, so they're discouraged and... I'm trying to understand, are you trying to keep them encouraged or are you trying to keep them trying different models so that they are finding the one that gives them a better ROI? So, so I, I, I think the, the big challenge on both is having an effort that you expect a result and be okay of not having that result and still pushing. When, when you, you know marketing and sales, like if you expect all your campaigns to work, You've never done marketing. Like right. you're going to have a lot of flops. Right. And we, we haven't had a flop in three years. So right. we got used to everything that we put out there. It was working. And now one every five that we're putting out there is not working. So they have all this work. Uh, they put it in the market. It doesn't work. And they have to restart again and do a new one. And that's very tiring. Right. So and so, are they are they feeling like they want to quit? Are they no. saying I, you know, so what's the. What's the our, impact for you? Is it that your growth is slow or is it that? Lower than what we wish. As an example, the summer was a tough summer yeah. uh, in online education. People with all the vaccines coming into the market, everything, people said, I could travel. I could at least go outside. I'm gone. So we, we talked with a lot of clients that they're recurring clients. And they said, hey, let's talk in September or October. I don't want to talk about anything that is being on Zoom for the next five months. Right. That's really a challenge, right? Like, and last year, everyone was home. They could not do anything else but learn and be better. So our attendance and our course was really, really high. So I believe it's just a part of people being tired and the summer and the rest. And the process of selling, usually people gave you an hour, hour and a half for a webinar to sell. And that that's that's not a reality anymore. The thing of the past. The thing of the past. and. One more thing. Um, now we had app, Apple with their phones having a significant change on the way you track people and all the metrics. 
And we have become really, really good with digital marketing. And all the things that we used to do, they're not working anymore. Some of them are not working because of all the privacy. And by the way, I am a big believer of that. Now my phone everywhere, every app that I open, it asks you, do you want your app to track you or not? And I said, no, 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 no. Right. I think Apple was expecting like 25 or 30% people would say no. And like 70% of people, it's double what they were expecting. Yeah. So that also screws all of our numbers on, on KPIs of our funnels because we were used to be able to track our funnels very, very detailed. And today is very, very hard. We have a really good culture and the team is super engaged. So it's not an issue of them quitting. They're, 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 uh, they're troopers. They're really, but it's, it's tiring. Uh, it's tiring. They, they, at the end of the day, said, you know what? I work like hell. I work 10 hours today and it didn't have the result that I was expecting. It's just tough. Yeah, you know, you use the word expecting a lot. And that's a very interesting word for, for me as I'm listening to how you're describing it. And, you know, you probably already know this, but I'll tell you just for the benefit of the audience who's listening, is that we know that uh, the results that people get are a function of their thinking, right? Yeah, and what we what we see in your case is that the thinking that was useful in the past is no longer useful. Correct. And so, and so what happens is when that thinking isn't useful and it's not generating the results that, that are required, what we need to do is go back and revisit our thinking and really look at the beliefs that we have that are fueling our emotional state, that exhaustion. And what you're really needing is for people to not get so tired, not feel tired, not okay. feel discouraged. And, and understand that it's part of, it's being normal. It's exactly. Of, and and so- you and I are in our, I mean, my 50s, almost in my 50s. My metabolism when I was younger, it was really fast. If I want to lose weight, I just went to run a half hour and that was it. Today, my metabolism is completely different. And it's challenging that you say like, oh my God, like I go to a gym every day and I still cannot move. I, I understand that. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> but, but it's something that when whenever you're young, it's like, come on, that's not an issue. And right. all my friends in their 40s and 50s were all struggling with the same thing. Yeah. Right? So and in, so in business is exactly the same. Right. And, and and perhaps that's one kind of approach to it. But the other is to really, from my perspective, is to do a little, I, I like the term irrigation. And what I mean by that is I like to irrigate and look at how people think and how their thinking creates the beliefs they have, because the beliefs they have drive their expectations. And so right now you see, um, let's call it a little bit of a break or a little bit of a um, uh, disconnect between their beliefs and their expectations, right? So they believe that um, if they put in X number of effort or X amount of effort, they're going to get X result. And when they're not getting the results that they're looking for, they feel low, they feel tired, they feel discouraged. And so there's there's a disconnect between what they're putting in and the results that they're getting. You got it right. That's right. And so the real work that needs to be done is very often what I see, and leaders do this all the time, is that they say, okay, we're not getting the results we want. So what we need to do is we need to use a new strategy. We need to do something different, right? Normal. We hear that all the time. This isn't working. Let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try that without really doing the irrigation first. And so from my perspective, I don't want to encourage you to do anything different. I want to encourage you to take a moment with your sales team and say, how are we thinking about this? What are the beliefs we have that are leading us to feel discouraged and tired? And so instead of creating a new strategy or creating a new approach, it's actually to slow down for a moment in order to speed up dramatically. Because what we see is that what we need to do is line up with their beliefs with the desired outcomes that they want in order to get the results that they want. Okay. Right. So, so what we're doing is imagine putting everybody in a room and, you know, literally saying, okay, we're not going to do anything new. We're going to think something new. What kind of thinking will lead us to the results that we want? Because this thinking is creating an experience where we're all tired and that's not the outcome we want. What kind of thinking? And what kind of effort we're going to have to put in? Well, to- but again, you're, you're jumping ahead. Okay. You're jumping ahead because you're already making it tired. You're making it hard. 
<laughs> I'm right? already telling them to expect it's going to be hard. Well, but, but, you know, you're already making it hard. And, and so what I want, I want you to, like, you're already saying, Hey, you know, you, you're going to have to put in more effort to get the results you want. And they're thinking, is that the kind of thinking that excites me? Not so much. Right. And so, right. Does that make sense? Makes sense. And so what I want you to do is go back and say, okay, what is the thinking that's causing us to feel tired and exhausted and disappointed? And what is the thinking that's creating the results that we are currently getting, which isn't ideal? And now what kind of thinking are we going to need in order to get the results we want? So I, I don't want you to talk about effort. I don't want you to talk about strategy. I want you to talk about thinking first. Why? You know what? It's kind of like going up to a dog. And I've said this before on the podcast and saying, you know what? I want the dog to wag his tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tail and shake it. But that's not how it works. And that's what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to say, okay, dog, your tail needs to wag faster. Let's make it move more quickly. Let's look at that tail engineering and make it go faster. And what I'm saying is, no, let's not do that. Let's look at the emotional state of the dog. Let's look at how the dog feels. Let's look at how the dog reacts to things. Let's see how to make the the dog happy. I need exactly. Happy. When the dog, when the dog is happy, the dog's tail naturally wags. That's correct. Okay. And so very often we're doing it upside down. And so for you, it's really digging, irrigating and getting at how are we thinking now and how do we need to be thinking? And if we need to be thinking like this, what strategy naturally flows from that thinking? Interesting. Okay. So it's turning it upside down. Interesting. I will definitely test the proposal. Okay, test the proposal and let me know. And if it works, then maybe we can talk about more strategic alliances. <laughs> Love to. Okay. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for being on my podcast. It was really, truly an honor. Same. Thank you, Kim, for the invitation. Uh, for those of you who are listening, if you have a challenge that you want to share on the podcast, please reach out to me. My email address is kim at frameofmindcoaching.com. And if you have a challenge that you are experiencing, but don't want to talk about on the podcast, please reach out to me as well. Again, my email address is kim at frameofmindcoaching.com. Daniel, how do people find you? Uh, Growth Institute, um, uh, that's our company. And then LinkedIn, it's probably the easiest. Um, The only thing is I really reach my cap. There's like a 30,000 people cap and I reach it. So um, you have to put follow on. We post a lot of things on how to scale your company. So growthinstitute.com, probably a better way to reach Daniel. Yes. Again, thank you. And I do hope that this is the beginning of a long friendship. Mm-hmm.